This is one of the new default aircraft that we have in X-Plane 12 and our Cirrus in X-Plane 12 is equipped with flight into known icing protection. That means it not only protects the wings from accumulating ice but also the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. And the reason that this is important is that the stabilizer provides downforce in normal flight. Most of the weight of the aircraft is in front of the center of lift so the stabilizer needs to provide downforce to counteract that moment. What happens if you accumulate too much ice on the stabilizer is that you can have a tail stall which results in that downforce going away and the airplane essentially trying to somersault. So what we do against that now in X-Plane 12 you can select all the surfaces like the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer and hook them up with the various de-ice and anti-ice systems that we have in X-Plane which includes electric heaters, pneumatic boots like you would find on a Baron or King Air, um, bleed air, thermal anti-ice that you find on all the airliners and the chemical de-ice that you will find on the Cirrus. The Cirrus um, chemical de-ice system now has a two different pumps with two different speeds so you, you can have a normal flow rate, the max flow rate, the emergency flow rate and of course you can fail uh, one pump, transfer to the backup pump, uh, all that good stuff. In X-Plane you could always change the location of the center of gravity so you could move the CG forward which would cause the plane to be nose heavy and more stable or you could move the CG backward which would cause the plane to be less stable and kind of tail heavy. What has changed in X-Plane 12 is that you can define stations throughout the aircraft to load up with uh, cargo or passengers and that not only moves the CG, I mean that's easy, but what it also does is it changes the moment of inertia around all the axis of the airplane. So if you put more weight in front of the CG and behind the CG that might not move the CG at all but it changes the moment of inertia around this axis as uh, opposed to having all the weight concentrated in the center. So what X-Plane designers can do now is define where actual weight goes in the airframe and thereby dynamically change the moment of inertia as you load the airplane. So the airplane will feel differently with more passengers and more cargo in it, not only in that it's heavier and maybe more nose heavy or more tail heavy, but it also feels heavier because of the change in moment of inertia. Another big change in X-Plane 12 is that you can assign each individual control surface on each wing its own hydraulic system. In X-Plane 11 it was a very simple thing like you could either have hydraulically actuated flight controls or not but in X-Plane 12 you can pick each individual aileron or flap or spoiler on or ground spoiler or flight spoiler on the left wing or the right wing and assign each one one or multiple hydraulic systems that it's powered from. So in this fictional airplane setup I have sketched here on the board in case you lost the red hydraulic system you would lose those individual red surfaces and could still fly on the blue and green surfaces. X-Plane 12 distinguishes trim between aerodynamic tabs and just preloading the flight controls. So if you take the tail of a 172 for example you will have the stabilizer the elevator and then you will have a little trim surface at the end of the elevator which you set with your trim wheel and then that little surface displaces the elevator to give you the desired up or down force on the stabilizer that you want. The Cirrus on, on the other hand works differently. The Cirrus has no tabs at the end of its flight controls. It's an aerodynamically completely clean design and what they do instead is they preload the flight controls themselves with adjustable uh, springs or bungee cords that work regardless of the airflow over the surface. And now X-Plane 12 distinguishes between those two systems and you can combine them in one plane even. So for example if you were flying a 182, the 182 would have the aerodynamic tabs on the stabilizer but it would have a preload on the rudder trim. Another new feature of X-Plane 12 is that it supports dual input for all flight controls which is cool if you are for example building a 737 cockpit. So with X-Plane 12 you can put two sets of yokes, two sets of pedals 
into the same computer, say, oh, this is the pilot control, this is the co-pilot control, and then they can either be electronically linked, um, or if you are building the hardware setup, mechanically linked, obviously. And then in normal operation, of course, both will control the same aircraft. I say we go to Vermont. It's too cold. I say we go to Bermuda. Vermont. Ber Bermuda. Vermont. So both will control the same flight controls. What can then happen in X-Plane 12, you can have individual jams of control surfaces. So for example, you could jam the left aileron, which would jam all the ailerons. So you could no longer wiggle on the yoke and uh, it, it wouldn't respond. What you can then do is break up the linkage between the left and right side, and then you can still fly the airplane with the right yoke and the right aileron. And that gives you at least a little bit of roll control in case the left side has failed. So with X-Plane 12, two sets of controls, either by plugging in two joysticks, that works, or by assigning one side of the flight controls from data refs, from a plugin over multiplayer, for example. If you fly the new A330 in X-Plane 12, you will notice that when you push the throttle all the way forward, it goes click, click, click into those detents here. Those detents command certain power settings to the full authority digital engine control system. You can set these up with your hardware throttle or it's fully integrated with the um, joystick curve and joystick control system in X-Plane. So even if you don't have a sophisticated Airbus throttle, you can configure your simple joystick throttle to interact with those um, gates or notches. Third party aircraft developers can also integrate with this have you set up your joystick so it matches your hardware and then with a plug-in control how much N1 or EPR or torque in case of a turboprop they want out of each setting. For the new R22 helicopter that's part of the default fleet of X-Plane we have a few features. One being the throttle governor that interacts with your joystick throttle if you have a sophisticated setup that allows you to have both a collective and a throttle on the flight controls. And if you have that kind of setup, it'll work exactly like it does in the real R22 with a governor switch on top of it. Um, if you don't, you can leave it on automatic and it'll just govern the, the throttle for you without you ever touching anything. We have a beautiful new F-14 in X-Plane 12. The F-14 operates from a carrier. How do you find your carrier when you're out there over the water? The answer is taken or tactical air navigation. It's a radio navigation system comparable to the civilian VOR DME system, but it's much smaller and much, much more compact than a big VOR station somewhere out in, in the countryside. So the Takan ground station is much, much smaller and that's why it can be carried by the frigate or by the carrier. And that is how the F-14 finds home. Plane Maker 12 also makes it easier for the designer of the aircraft to specify its approach capability. In terms of the modern satellite based approaches, you would find S bass capability more in a plane like this, and G bass capability more in a plane like this. And in X Plane 12, it's easy for the developer of the plane to configure whether you are able to pick up a WAS approach or a GLS approach. In Plane Maker 12, designers can also specify the location of various sensor points on the aircraft. For example, the position of the radio altimeter. What happens in real life is that the radio altimeter sensor is often located somewhere in front of the gear so that the readout of the radio altimeter will depend on the deck angle of the aircraft. The X-Plane FMS and Autopilot can work together to fly a VNAV descent. Up until now we were using a system that originally came out of X-Plane 6 where you could pretty much only define altitudes at waypoints and it would just connect the dots, play a game of connect the dots and hit the altitude at each waypoint. The system in X-Plane 12 is a little bit more sophisticated in that the airplane can specify what the idle path would look like and then you can specify hard constraints or between constraints or soft constraints at uh, waypoints and explain well try its best to fit the idle path through the constraints or insert geometric segments in between as it needs to. So occasionally on the uh, navigational display you will see those green donuts 
in the flight plan, which are deceleration segments where the airplane, for example, will level off to slow down to 250 knots below 10,000 feet. And that's what would happen here. In X-Plane 12, you always need to be on the lookout for cold weather. What happens in cold weather is that the pressure levels of the atmosphere are closer together. As opposed to warm weather, which spaces the pressure levels further apart. And since the altimeter in your aircraft just indicates which pressure level you are flying on, you might assume you're cruising along at that level, but if it's a very cold day, you're actually flying at this pressure level until you hit that obstacle on that mountain. And then you're both cold and dead.